It's time to stop the nonsense because winning is everything. And we're doing a decent amount of that. So, cue little Wayne. He's a beast. He's a dog. He's about to be a problem. It's okay if you're a goon, but what's a goon to a goblin? You are a Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl-related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen. We're available on all of your podcasting platforms and visually as well on YouTube. Today, we partially brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment matter more with FanDuel. Join today and get 150 bucks back in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. We get to get started in the vein of success. Success typically comes via way of winning, but we'll save some of that meat and taters for the end here. Let's jump off into this right here, right now. We got to give a big congratulations. First on deck for today, shout out to all my regulars, a.k.a. regulators out there, is the first class of 2025 commit, the 5'11", 175-pound athlete, Matrail Lopez from Ida Bell. Yes, there's probably only one Taco Bell, Oklahoma. But if you're one of those in that, oh, great, we're going after another itty-bitty to a high school in the middle of Oklahoma guy camp, let's just shut that down now. Washington State, you can go ahead and stand down because this little bitty 2A wide receiver, punt returner, kick returner, LB, CB, DB, whatever you need him to be, will be the new king of elusivity in Stilly. Now, I won't call him uh, Tyreek Hill, but I will sure as all get out, call his film Tyreek the Cheetah-esque, right? These are hands down the best miss you in a phone booth clips I've seen since at least Justin Gilbert, especially in an Oklahoma State jersey. Now, Brennan Presley, our main man BP, he can do the daggone thing now, but y'all, <laughs> this kid is just different. His film hits different because now not a nobody can come even close to hitting him. Matreo Lopez has these poor fellas out here skating on ice. Bet money he's made at least one person quit the sport of football, if not due to just constant embarrassment but at least of looking ridiculously foolish with all the broken ankles that he's definitely supplied. That has left some dudes reevaluating their football lives, right? Uh, but I need you to stop, collaborate, and hit the daggone like button. Share, comment, subscribe before this episode gets all kinds of icy, all right? And speaking of ice, guys, if... Ice equals money, and money equals ice, and ice equals drip. Then all you got to do is wait until the beat drops, and definitely cue that little Wayne for ya mill, milli ya milli ya milli milli ya milli ya to leave. His film says that he's a new school throwback linebacker. Now that sounds slightly confusing. All right, so the new school side, you ain't never gotta hit the B button because milli has a hit stick that is built on stuck mode. Now, he's already coming in at a little over 6'1", 230, with the TWF Warfare Training Regiment already under his belt. That's why he's a beast. He's a dog. He's about to be a certified problem. He is a ball-seeking missile, ultra-aggressive, like old-school ultra-aggressive. I'm talking Jack Lambert, Dick Butt Butkus, Lawrence Taylor, and Ray Lewis level old school. On top of all that, he's got the perfect low center of gravity hips of a safety, right? They got him out here looking like uh, the Debo swole version of Aqib Tlaib. 
He's got the hands of a tight end and the proper pursuit angles of a seasoned vet with pro-level training uh, because he has it. Go figure that one. That's just from the film, okay? What to me is even more impressive is that other people that have spent most of their entire careers in the recruiting, scouting, and development department have all sent me several messages the day this information was released about how this was an absolute steal for O-State. The word that kept coming up was relentless motor. The dude wants to play 24-7. Sideline, sideline, downhill, smash mouth. He doesn't care. He's about all of it. Now, some have said that, you know, his mom has been a major driving force. And not only his life, but just this whole recruiting process. And she's had to help break down so many walls and barriers trying to navigate the new wild, wacky recruiting process where some are more concerned about giving a sales pitch than giving a legitimate chance. <laughs> TCU. <clears throat> Yamil Mili Talib is a cowboy now. And he's becoming a cowboy because this is our house where integrity turns young cats into young men and young men into leaders. Oh, yeah, and surprise, surprise, Rob Glass was a major uh, deciding factor in this as well. He doesn't want all the big-time crazy hype or the distractions of the big city skyline style of life because that can sometimes cast an uncomplicated shadow of doubt, frustration, complacency, so on and so forth on anybody. He's here to be a cowboy for all the right reasons. We want guys to come here to be cowboys because it is different. You do get a different experience in Stillwater, Oklahoma. You do get a, a different level of focus because, again, it's not about all the other crazy stuff. So if you're coming to be a part of like the big crazy scene, then you're going to have a hard time flourishing in Stillwater. But if you're coming to be a dog and to be about your business, this is the perfect fit, and this is the perfect guy. You all know how excited I already am. Guys, I think Gunnar Wilson's going to be a savage. We all know the talent that Landon Cleveland already possesses. We all know that David Cabongo got offers from your Bamas and your Texases because he has all of the intangibles to be a phenomenal defensive back. Tamaric Johnson could shake out into a two-deep scenario. Armstrong Notum is already coming with D1 power lifting numbers to support the mass to weight transition on the defensive line. But Yamil Talib, to me, he already has everything you could physically possibly want. Right? Now, the only, the only knock I could find was. The dude causes a lot of forced fumbles and then forgets to kind of go scoop the ball up and, and help his, his teammates block down. But that's because he's super pumped up, super fired up. And again, you like that ultra-aggressive mentality because what made Oklahoma State success last season was the ability to practice really hard all year which is not something Mike Gundy was a big fan of, right? We all know Mike Gundy was one of the first in line to kind of cut out some of the training regiment, tackle, you know, go more to, towards thud, just to kind of, you know, have less injuries throughout the course of the season. In order to have the best team physically possibly available by the time you make it to the Big 12 title game, the three deep is almost more important than the starters. I, if that sounds crazy, well, I've got I've got a, a little bit of a breakdown that'll maybe make it a little less crazy. But speaking of breakdowns, speaking of ways that we can all help each other, y'all know I'm here to help you. And today's hiring market, it's it's a crapshoot, right? We all know that. It's a high stakes gamble anytime you're trying to get people in the doors to make your business better. That's why LinkedIn isn't just another job board. It's got a vast network of more than a billion professionals with a B, and it makes it the best place for you to hire. It gives you access to professionals you cannot find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of the guesswork 
for you. And it makes it easy because it's intuitive. Hiring is so easy, in fact, that many qualified candidates get a, a, a good person in the first 24 hours. Matter of fact, 86% of small businesses get a phenomenal person in the first 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing way too many different capes and hats and rotating multiple jobs now. They may not have the same time and resources to do the hiring. LinkedIn has you covered. So go there now to post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Again, that is linkedin.com slash locked on college. Go there now to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, so as we've had the opportunity to look at the schedule and to discuss the idea that Oklahoma State has like 20 to 21 of 22 returning starters whenever you factor in Lyric Rawls into that equation, the sky's the limit for Oklahoma State in 2024, right? But if the objective is to get past the Big 12 title game, to go beyond Arlington, then having 20, 21 starters back is great. But that's not going to be the only thing that gets you to that level. The other thing that gets you to that level is preparation. Now, as we just alluded to, Oklahoma State head coach Mike Gundy did a little bit of a shift this year, a little bit out of his norm in regards to the way that we were going to practice. The high-intensity tackle to the ground, no-holds-barred style of attack worked for Oklahoma State. Not only did it make us better, but the buy-in from the team was significantly better. Again, the KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid. If it's stupid, simple, all you have to do is perfect your craft to dominate your area of operation, whatever that may be. The defensive line responsibility is different than some of the back-end guys. But none of it matters if the starters and the second-teamers are not getting, you ready? Power for Division One reps. And this is one of the brilliant sides of, of 2021. As we had guys that were bound to be starters, that are starters now, that were on the scout team then. So 2021, the scout team, the third team, was so absolutely ridiculous that the starters felt like they were more in a war in practice than sometimes in the games. And we all know that 2022 didn't go so hot. In 2021, we made some things unnecessarily difficult on ourselves from an offensive perspective. But the success that the defense was able to have was a direct byproduct of the depth that we had at the time and the quality of depth, right? And we also saw after 2022, there was you know a, a big mix-up of transfers, right? We had the we had an exodus style of problem, and then we had to fill those gaps. We were able to do so with guys like Josiah Johnson and Leon Johnson the third and Justin Wright, and then uh, Anthony Goodlow, obviously. But when you look at what this season could be, it doesn't matter what the starters look like. It doesn't, and just like a quarterback is a perfect example. Whether Alan Bowman's the guy or Garrett Rangel wins the job or Zane Flores wins the job, that competition is going to inherently mean that we are better at that position than we were last season. Last season, we went with the high intensity practices to make us significantly better, to make us more hard nosed. And it worked, but that comes at a cost, right? And the cost is. You have bodies that are going to go down throughout the course of the season, right? And this ties me right back into whether you see a PWO or not, those days of it mattering are pretty much no more. The PWO programs in the Big 12 are getting better. And I would bet my house that the team with the best PWO program is going to be the top dog more often than not in the Big 12. If you're, the quality of depth is so insane that your first team guys are getting ridiculous looks from a scout team, then they have to change the way they practice. And if they have to change the way they practice so much that it affects how they prepare, 
It's going to make them better. And we've seen both sides of this equation. We've seen where we had a stacked, loaded, deep roster where we could practice significantly harder and do significantly more than what is standard. And we've also seen having just barely enough people on the roster to kind of keep everything floating above water. Now is the time to strike. When you have this level of depth, and you know you have the talent of this number of returning starters, now you get to chip away at who's going to have the best PWO program in the Big 12. Because whoever has that likely has the keys to end up in Arlington more often than not. Maybe not every year, but every other year for daggone sure. That needs to be Oklahoma State. And so when you look at Yamil Tlaib and you say, well, he's a walk-on, First of all, you just need to take in consideration he's not your uh, typical run-of-the-mill walk-on by any stretch of the imagination. Secondarily, you also need to know that he's coming in here to be about his business to do what? To earn a scholarship. Because he has enough pride in his preparation for the season to know that and to prepare in a way that's going to put him in a position to not only contribute right away, Get that scholarship, because that is a badge of honor. But until then, how do you get there? You dominate at practice. Guys, you know I love my comps, and I, I typically you know, save some comps for the 7-on-11 stuff, but this already reminds me a lot of Devin Harper. Right? Devin Harper showed up, and... He was uh, classified as a little bit too short, right? A, a little bit undersized, not quite agile enough to be a safety, but not big enough to be a linebacker, yada, yada, yada. And then he stayed at Oklahoma State. He was able to bide his time, put the work in, learn from guys like Justin Phillips and Amen and Bogma Miga and Malcolm Rodriguez. And then when he did get his day in the sun inside of Boone Pickens Stadium, he made a name for himself. And that name he made for himself in one year, his fifth year at Oklahoma State, catapulted him to the NFL, where he's still at right now. He started from the bottom, and now he's here. I see a very similar path forward for you to believe. And I, I'm pretty sure that his family is insanely excited. I know Akeep Tlaib is going to be pumped to show up in Stillwater, Oklahoma, to get loud, to get rowdy, and to see what Yamil becomes. But this isn't, again, just about Yamil. We're also talking about the preparation of the defensive line. So, Aiden, you're important. Ashton, the Isaac Twins, you're both going to be crucial to the development of the defensive line. And you're preferred walk-ons. We've got a quarterback that we just brought in to do what? To help fill the void. And the void that you have as preferred walk-ons sometimes leaves the rest of the roster not ready to compete at the highest level. We, we were not ready to play Texas in the Big 12 title game. Right? We, we can call it spade a spade. They were far more physically prepared than we were. That's because when they had somebody go down and they put somebody else in, no drop-off. And that's partially because they're getting pushed so much at practice that they know come, come Saturdays, it's very unlikely that they're going to run into anything that's significantly more difficult than what they've been preparing for in practice all daggone week. Getting guys like Emil Tlaib is the ticket to making sure that our PWO program is the best in the Big 12. Once we accomplish that, if we have the best PWO program in the Big 12, then we can take the next step and try to get the best PWO program in the United States of America. It doesn't always have to be about scholarship and numbers. It doesn't always have to be about just the monetary value associated with a scholarship spot. There's other ways to incentivize PWOs to come to Oklahoma State and build this roster. 
Because if you're on the roster, you build the roster, you get the rings. You get to participate in all the fun, crazy activities, the bowl games, the playoffs, the Big 12 title games. That's what's going to be in store for Oklahoma State University if we can keep this up. By this, I mean continuing to keep the PWO program at the forefront of everybody's mind, rocking the orange and black. Because if you spend all of your money and you and you take up all of your resources to make sure that all of the first teamers are happy, it will mean nothing in the end. That, mean, that means you'll have some happy dudes that break a lot of records, but it doesn't equal the trophies. It doesn't equal the wins that we need them to on the schedule to continue to make this thing grow. We have more Cowboys now in the NFL than at any point in time ever in our history. We have to continue that. If we do that, I think we do take our seat, our rightful seat, as the new kings of the Big 12. Speaking of being a king, we all know winning matters. I mean, winning is virtually everything, right? And I want you to win. Whether you won or not on the Super Bowl, foosball season is gone. But it's okay. It's basketball time. And you can get buckets and make money with FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Right now, our new customers get $150 back in bonus bets with any $5 bet. Any winning $5 bet, and you get $150 back. All, all you got to do is bet the right one. Because <laughs> if it wins, so do you. Winning is everything. And whether you're betting on you know, quick bets, same game parlays, player props, overs, unders, who's going to win the titles, the divisions, and more, go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Go there now. Make sure you shoot your shot with FanDuel.com slash locked on because FanDuel is the official sports book partner of the NFL. We're just going to keep rolling right along here. Anybody who says winning's not everything, you might need, you might need to reevaluate your stance there. Right, because the one thing I said I would never cover was tennis. I don't get it, don't care to get it, never understood it, so on and so forth. Until the other day, I got suckered into a little bit of tennis action. Still had no clue what's going on, but you know it was kind of cool. And then I watched yesterday as we took down number two in the country, Stanford. Still had no idea what was happening, but at least I can read enough to know that when you have higher numbers than the other team, that typically means you're winning. And then when you win, you gain fans. Nobody can say that uh, they're going to go get a bunch of new fans in any sport, at any school, anytime, anywhere, if you're constantly in the doldrums all the time. I know well, I know a little bit about tennis now because people have been super helpful and awesome in explaining some stuff, but I swore I would never watch tennis. I swore I'd never invest any time in tennis. But you know what? When you're winning and you're good, you draw eyeballs. And then when you draw eyeballs and you win again, you draw them again. And then if you just keep winning... Oh, my goodness, you got random, crazy, loud, bearded feet people cheering on tennis. Now, the downside is now I'm down to go watch a tennis match. Problem is, I'm the hooting and hollering fella all day, every day. I don't know how to not be just me. So I'm excited to go to a tennis match, even though I'm sure I will inevitably get booted from the daggone thing. Tennis needs to be a little bit more lively, just like golf. You saw our main man, Ricky Fowler. Yeah, he missed the cut, but he sunk a pretty nice birdie, and everybody's trying to quiet down the crowd, and he's telling everybody to get wild, get loud. Let's make this thing fun. Tennis can be the same way, and I can be the dude to help it be that way. Softball. Thank you. We love you, Coach Kenny Gajewski. You are a G. CKG. This weekend was going to be a difficult task for our, our, our softball team. 
going to L.A., play in a tournament, to take on UCLA, who's always one of the juggernauts of softball. And then not only that, but we also had our schedule mixed up, and there was a game that we were supposed to play against Portland State. That got scrapped. We had to play somebody else, and that somebody else threw their ace. It almost caught us off of our game, but we had a late DH, and then Caroline Long dropped a bomb to get the game winner, and then we move on again. And then we beat a top. 10 squad in UCLA after beating another top 10 squad. And now it gets even better. The problem I have, all right, since when? And I, and honestly, before I get so fired up, I start breaking stuff. Maybe somebody can tell me because maybe I'm wrong. But I don't recall any, any time ever before that there wasn't multiple games on the radio. Like, we're doing wrestling remote? Why? We're not even having somebody do a softball call? Why? I don't get if, if the excuse is because Casey, Casey Kendrick or John Holcomb or Rex Holt or whoever's tied up doing multiple things, why do we not have backups? Like, why are we acting like the radio media side of Oklahoma State University is so insignificant that we don't have enough people that are willing to go call games on the road? Well, let me offer my daggone services to Casey or, or whoever, to whomever needs to holler at whomever. I'm already on the road traveling. I'm at airports weekly. I'll go do it for daggone free. All you got to do is make sure I got a, a car somewhere to sleep, or a plane ticket, and I'll do the daggone thing. I don't even know anything about tennis. Yeah? But I would imagine there's a decent portion of Oklahoma State country that would prefer a little bit of, a, of, of calling action if it's not there. Softball and wrestling? That's a different story. It should be a crime. And Chad Weiberg should be chastised for that crime of not having somebody willing to just go cover a softball game or a tournament. Like, we have a big enough alumni base, and I know for certainty there's enough people that have graduated from Oklahoma State University with media broadcast style of degrees that are not working right now. I also know that those same people would love to do the same thing I'm offering, which is to do something beneficial and go call a game. Like, I, I, I'm assuming this is a financial constraint. It sounds embarrassing if it is. But if it isn't, please, somebody explain to me. Because I'm a radio guy, right? I've said it a thousand times. I'll sit in the car for four hours and listen to wrestling, baseball, now tennis as well. I don't give a hoot. I want to follow 99% of every single sport on campus. So. To be deprived of that is, it's a tragedy. Thank goodness the Oklahoma State softball game against UCLA was on ESPN. But when I was driving to my house, I got nothing but a stupid stat track. So thankfully, I made a couple phone calls and had some people you know, give me updates until I got to the house. When I got to the house on ESPN, that's cool. But this is ridiculous. But anywho, tennis is looking for Oklahoma State's 54th national championship as we speak. Hopefully we get her done. Cross country just brought home national title number 53. Can we get national title 54 right here, right now? 2024 is looking really good. But let's take care of business. This would be huge. And it would be redemption, right? Bring it on. Bring it on. I want a title. Now I want uh, softball to go take care of more business. All right, y'all. So we're going to have for this one a right here. My podcasting people, you know you're the bread, you're the butter, you're the bricks, you're the foundation. I appreciate you. Go hit the five stars if you're getting five-star stuff here, baby. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. All right, y'all. You know the drill. I love you. God bless. Go, Pokes. I'll catch you on the next one.
Later, taters.